Hey everyone, it's Game Dev with Drew, and we're back today for another episode. Today I'm going to be showing you how to move your character. So this episode we're just going to be working with top-down movement, but next episode we're going to be working with platformer movement. So last episode we installed Godot, which is very simple, and Godot opens up very quickly, as you remember. We were just working on this. Thank you so much for um, for subscribing to me. I already have four subs, and we got almost 30 views. And thank you for Sync for saying, I heckin' love Godot. I really appreciate that. So now, today, we're just going to be working on something called uh, top-down movement. So last episode, we worked on this ruler mode. So this episode, we're going to be working with this just to measure out what character we want to use. And, you know, I'm going to be honest with you, I'm kind of feeling this red, this red guy. So, this guy's about 60 pixels tall. Um, and what, how we're going to do this is we're going to press region, enable region, and now we have this, our little guy right here. But we're going to press down here, which says texture region. Uh, so we're just going to zoom in on this guy right here. And perfect. So we're just going to do simple top-down movement. And to do that, we're going to have to make something called a script. So we're actually going to delete this. We're going to delete this node. And we're going to make something called a new scene. So last episode, I talked about how scenes are not what you think they are. They're just objects that store things. So in here, we're going to press other node. And then we're going to search for a kinematic body 2D. A kinematic body is just something that you can move around. It's very simple. It's just something that has uh, kinematics. So it up here, there's a, a triangle that's a warning. And it says there's no collision shape to define its shape. So let's give it a shape. But first, before we give it a shape, we have to give it a texture. So let's just drag out on the texture. And now, as you can see, this texture is a child of this parent. So now again, let's go into the texture region, go into region, enable region, and then which which one did, which which guy did I get grab this guy right here, this guy right here, and then we're gonna center him. Put you in the center. Perfect. So now that we have this guy already. We need to define his collision. So what we're going to do is we're going to add another child node. And we're going to get a collision shape 2D. And with the collision shape 2D, it says a shape must be provided. So over here, you can see that it says shape. So we're going to press new shape and new rectangle shape. Personally, I like changing the color of my rectangle shapes. So I'm just going to press visibility, modulate, and just make it something different. That looks good. So this is not actually going to be visible on the game. First, we're going to save this guy, put this in scenes, and then we're going to say, we're going to make this our player. And we're going to rename this as our player. I'm going to press save. I'm going to save this main scene. And then over here in scenes, you can see that we can drag out player our player scene, which is just perfect. So now you can see we just have our guy right there. He's very small. So we're going to make him a little bigger, actually. Uh. So under here, we can press player, transform, scale, and then let's just do three. Oh, yeah, that looks good. And you see how this looks a little blurry? We're going to make this a le less blurry. So we're going to press this, and then we're going to press import. And then we're going to turn off filter and press re-import. And see, now he looks all good and pixely. The reason why this works is because this is a pixel art. And when you turn off the filtering, it makes it so it's less smooth and more pixely, which is what we want. So now that we have this saved, it automatically updates. And now he's bigger. So let's run our game. 
Look how big he is on our screen. Perfect. Now let's get this player to move. So what we're going to do, we're going to press player, and we're going to press this button right here, attach a new script. And we're just going to call it player.gd. All this stuff doesn't matter. I'm so I'm going to go in depth into GD script in a new in a different video, but today we're just going to be talking about something very simple and just simple movement. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a new function, which is a built in function called function underscore physics process delta. Delta occurs every single frame. So this means there's going to be a physics process every single frame. So before we get into movement, there are just four things that we need to define our actual movement keys. So the way that Godot does this is you can just go into project, project settings, input map, and then you can add your own actions. So we're going to uh, make our new actions, move left, move right, move down, move And now in here, we can just press this plus button, key, and then this is move left, so we'll do A, and then we'll do this again, and we'll make it the left the left uh, key. Then move right, we'll do the same thing. It doesn't matter if you press physical key, I'm gonna be honest with you, I don't know the difference, so that means you don't need to know the difference either. Okay, now that we're all done with that, we can close out of that. And this is going to be very simple. So we're just going to do something very simple, and we're going to define some different values. So in Godot, you define values by typing in var. Var stands for variable. So we're just going to do var speed equals to 20,000. Now that we have our speed input, we can just do, do something as well. We just need to add something that's called velocity. Velocity is just, you know, the amount of speed we're going at at any chosen point. So we're just going to make velocity called something called a vector 2D. So we're going to do var velocity equals vector 2. So vector 2 is something that stores two floats right here the x float and the y float the x float is uh on this the x float goes from this way to this way the y float is this way to this way there's something called the z float but we can't see that in this two-dimensional uh projection so now that we have our vector two and we have everything visualized, we can start doing movement. So first of all, we have to make our velocity, whenever the game starts, or whenever there's a new delta, we need to make sure that there's nothing moving. So what we're going to do is velocity.x equals zero. So now we can just get into our movement. So if input.is underscore action not just but underscore action underscore pressed then we'll do move uh, up bell then we're going to do velocity dot y minus equals no plus equals so we're going to do plus equals speed times delta the reason why we're doing speed times delta and with a speed that seems so high is because it just looks smoother. So I'm just going to show you what it looks like right now. And there's one thing that I missed. There's something in kinematic bodies called move and slide. So in order to move your kinematic body, you have to do something called move and slide. So what we're just going to do is we're going we have to pass in something called a linear velocity which is just a vector 2 and look at up here we have our we have our vector 2 right here so we're just going to do vec we're just going to do velocity and then the second thing right here 
second argument is just the up direction, which is another vector 2, but we're going to do something called vector 2 dot up. It's just the up direction, and that's all we need to pass in. And then you can... Uh, I did plus equals, even though I, I, knew, I, I knew it was minus equals. One thing that does look weird is because he just keeps on sliding because there is no uh, friction. So we need to put in artificial friction. So we're just going to type in velocity equals move in slide velocity. We also have to put in velocity dot y equals zero for each delta just so that there's friction going up as well. So now that there's friction going up, we can turn the speed back up higher because I am not very smart. And look at that. Now we have to go down. So by going down, let's just copy this, paste it, make it move down, velocity.y plus speed. And now we can move up and down. And look how smooth that looks. It's very smooth. Now we're going to do something with the left and right mo motion. So we're just going to do this, copy paste, move left, velocity dot x minus speed because we want them to go left. So we're going to go in the negative x direction, go back in the last direction. Move right plus. So that is all there is to movement in four directions. Next episode, I'm going to be showing you guys gravity with a kin kinematic body as well as collisions. And in an off episode, I'm going to be showing you guys how to do uh, 2D platformers. So thank you all for watching. Be sure to subscribe and enjoy your day.